Do you want to know what makes an eyelid glow? Then everybody watch Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome back to the Dean Show. This is part two. We were covering the top five arguments for the existence of the creator of the heavens and the earth. When we come back, we've gotten to number two. So we're counting it down. You don't want to go nowhere. We'll be right back to continue this fabulous show. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. There's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Our audience doesn't have to take an Arabic class. <laughs> For all our non-Muslim guests, our brothers in humanity, who I always say we want them to be our brothers in faith. Inshallah. We want the best for everybody, don't we? Yes, indeed, indeed. We want them in paradise. Because what do you got of this life? You live a short life, maybe you have all the money, you have all the wealth, you have the big house, cars, but eventually you're going to die. So I think this is a very serious topic because death is something that we can all agree upon. We're going to die. So we need to take these things seriously, don't you think so? It's very important, very important. Life is very short and we have to, God has given us, like in the Quran, God has mentioned close to 750 times to think and ponder, to reflect, to investigate. And inshallah, like we mentioned in the last uh, segment, chapter 41, verse number 53 of the Quran mentions that God has given us signs both in the universe around us and within ourselves that this is the truth. And inshallah, we are going to investigate more and provide the answers that this is indeed the truth when we reason out using science and logic that there is only one God and this is the guidance from God. And that's the thing, Islam doesn't push away science. It doesn't persecute people of science as some religions have in the past. The more deeply you look into the wonders of the world, everything that you find today that's been confirmed, it goes hand in hand with the Quran, doesn't it? Indeed, indeed it does. So let's go now and continue on giving the five top arguments for the existence of the creator of the heavens and earth. We went from five, four, you ready for number three? All right, so let's uh, just briefly say that we went over the reason from biology, biology, that testifies to the existence of God. From biochemistry, we give evidence that uh, it cannot have, uh, the cell cannot have came about by itself. It is so complicated and efficient. God has to be the creator. And now, inshallah, we'll touch upon argument number three, two, and number one, inshallah. So if you didn't see arguments five and four, you can go back to thedeanshow.com, T-H-E-D-E-N show.com. You have your own private section there. People can see some of the previous shows we've done. Take it away with number three. Number three is dealing with the evidence from physics. Physics. Brother Eddie, was physics your favorite topic in college? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> But we'll just touch upon it, inshallah. Yes. Okay. Now, there is a uh, theory or fact in physics which is called as the second law of thermodynamics. It's a very big word, but it's very simple to understand. It basically says that uh, things move from order to disorder. For example, suppose if we don't take off this place, if we don't take care of it, eventually, you know, the paint is going to peel off, the dust is going to compile, pile up, and eventually, you know, things are going to uh, disintegrate. So from order to disorder, this is what this law says. Now, if you take this law to the logical consequences, this whole universe is a big system. It is also has to move from order to disorder. So what the scientists have said that if long enough time passes, that means we will be in the total state of disorder. No, each single atom within myself, within the whole world out there, they are moving, they are revolving, each single atom. Yes. Electron and protons and neutrons within each single uh, atom. All that energy is one day going to expire. So we will be eventually going through the heat death of the universe. So that is what eventually will happen if long enough time passes. So when we converse with the atheists sometimes, or people who deny God, they say that this world is in existence forever. It is infinite. 
That's what they say. That's what they say, right? It has always been like this. But according to the second law of thermodynamics, if long enough time passes, we'll be in a state of total chaos and heat death. That means I shouldn't be speaking. There should not be any sun, moon, or any motion to begin with. That only happens if long enough time passes. I'm speaking, you're hearing, right? You have the monitors, you have the lights up here. That means we are not in the state of heat death, are we? No. We are not. Since we are not in the state of heat death, that means long enough time has not passed. If long enough time has not passed, that means the time began, the universe began. If the universe began, that means anything that begins to exist has to have a beginner. Yes. And the beginner, we Muslims say, is Allah, the creator himself. If not existed, how can, it, how can it create itself? Definitely. Right? So this is argument number three with Dr. Sabil here on The Dean Show. We're going to take a break. I know you're excited. We're counting down. We've gotten from five, four, three. We've got two and one left. So, again, all we ask is that you have an open mind, humble heart, and if this is starting to make sense, it's going to continue making sense, God willing, and then hopefully you can do the right thing and accept the truth and let it penetrate. And then, as they say, the truth shall set you free. We'll see you in a second here on The Dean Show. Allah, only one when you look at the Bible and it says the, the earth has four corners, the, the, it, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If any Christian can point out a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself say that I am God, I am ready to accept Christianity. Back on the Dean Show with Dr. Sabil, giving you the top five arguments for the existence of the creator of the heavens and earth to many people, to the vast majority of the world. This is apparent. You just have to look outside and you see the sun and you see the mountains and you see this universe and you see the different colors and shapes, sizes. It's something that just any rational human being, even if he didn't agree with the religion or man-made religion organized by man, he should go a little bit further. And hopefully this show will stimulate him to turn that light back on, to continue the same way a person looks for the material things and success in this life, he'll look for the ultimate success, not only in this life, but also in the hereafter, because we, as we said, we're all going to die. This is a serious topic, and we're counting it down from five, four, three. Are you ready for number two? Number two, inshallah. Let's go for it. Let's go. Number two, here on the Dean Show. Number two is the evidence from the fine-tuning of the universe. Now, an analogy really quick. You know, we are sitting in the studio up here. Uh, we are sitting down on the, ch on the chair. The chairs have to be arranged in a proper way. The cameras are focused in such a way that they don't point down to the floor or up there. They're focused in the right place. Yes. You have the proper lightning. The whole thing is fine-tuned so we could have a proper, friendly conversation up here. Absolutely. So as we are sitting down here, how come we are not floating? How come we are not, you know, crushed ourselves? That means there is enough gravity to hold us down in the right amount of gravity so we could sit down properly. Specifically here on the earth? Yes, on the earth. So suppose if the gravity was a little bit less, we would be floating, okay? Yes. Just imagine. <laughs> or if the gravity even is lesser, we'll be floating off into space. Yeah. If the gravity is more than what we have right now, that means we will be crushed ourselves on our own weight. We won't exist. We don't think about these things. Amazing. Somebody has place the right amount of gravity on earth. Just the right amount. Just the right amount. The air that we are breathing over here right now, the air has to contain about 78% nitrogen and about 21% oxygen. Suppose if the oxygen percentage was higher or lower, that oh. means the way that we are breathing... What would happen? We won't be able to survive the way that we are surviving right now. So it has to be uh, the exactly the right amount. And it is exactly the right it amount. It is the right amount. Who placed the right amount of oxygen for us to breathe, for us, for animals, for the plants to survive? 
So if somebody brings you a cup of coffee and there's just the right amount of sugar, because some people won't drink the coffee if there's not just the right amount of cream so, and sugar, and, you, and it just happened to come to you, and it's simple examples, and now you just said, you know, oh, this coffee's great, just the right amount of sugar, who put this in here? Oh, it just came like that, it just happened. Yeah, and we're just, when we're speaking about coffee, we're just speaking about one human being, you know, for our taste buds. Yeah. But over here, we're speaking about life and death. Exactly. Life and death, okay? Same way, suppose if uh, the shape of the earth and the distance between the earth and the sun, it is exactly the right distance. If it were any more closer, we'll be so hot on this earth, life would have perished. If we were a little bit, little bit away from the sun, it would be too cold, even then the life would have perished. So there are so many parameters, so many uh, different uh, variables which are so fine-tuned on earth, in our bodies, within ourselves, and in the universe, that they cannot have came about by chance. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. I look at some gadgets, some things you can't understand, but you can't deny it because you don't understand. You look, you open up, let's say, a car engine, or you open up a computer, or some high-tech piece of machinery, and if you're not versed in that, if you're not an engineer, and you don't know about this gadget, there's no way you look at it and you're like, this is amazing, all these little fine... Uh, uh, instruments inside and everything is running according to its precise mechanism. It was built for a purpose. You can't understand it, but you don't deny it. But some people don't understand and they deny. It's amazing. And we wouldn't deny that this piece of machinery just came by chance, would we? No, because there is so many variables, so much fine-tuning in there. The right amount, the right place, the right distance, the right shape for the earth, for the body, for the cell, for the whole universe cannot have come about by chance. It is impossible. If you do the, the theory of probability in math, it will go beyond 10 raised to the power of minus 50. And anything beyond that is in the range of impossible. What if I just took the, <laughs> the alphabet, A to Z, and I threw it in a, in, 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 in a garbage, or I threw it in a pot, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, what would be the chance if I just took A, and I took B, and I took C, and I just start taking them out? I threw them in there, shook it up, and, I just start, and it just lined up A to Z. Is this possible? Or for that example, suppose if you have a big jar with all the alphabets in there, if you throw the alphabets, they're not going to form letters, chapters, words, instructions. They're not going to do that, no matter how many times that you keep on throwing that. And how can we imagine the genetic code inside the body, the fine-tuning of the universe, all the small mini-city inside the cell, running by itself, by chance, came about by nobody? That's not possible. Not possible. Yeah. We're, we're almost running out of time. And we have made it to number one. 